Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I'm so happy to have you here for this series. If you've looked at the list of supplies that we're gonna use to make this journal, you will have noticed that I put corrugated cardboard on the list and just random paper. This is going to be a really easy journal. And because I want it to be a really easy journal, if you don't have corrugated cardboard, you can use any kind of paper on the front. I, I like the look of corrugated cardboard. I like that it is sturdy, but you can also just use regular paper. I will tell you after it opens and closes over and over again, it can get a little bit weak on the crease there, um, but you can always put masking tape into the journal. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece right in here because I've noticed that this journal is getting a little bit, I don't know, it just feels to me like it opens and closes too easily. But never be afraid to work on a journal. Don't be afraid to add things to make it stronger or whatever. It just adds to the overall layering effect. So you can pick whatever you want for the cover um, as far as paper. It can be a file folder that has been cut down and you've reinforced with tape. I've got a couple of pieces of corrugated cardboard out. Um, I was tempted to go with this one because it already has some nice gesso on it, but I'm gonna start with this piece. Closed, it is about four by six and a half. It's, it's coming apart here and I am going to glue this because I want both layers. Uh, I think just that one layer that's wavy, I, it's not gonna be thick enough. So I am gonna glue this together where it was coming apart. We will put that to the side and let it dry. In fact, I'll set my coffee cup on it for right now. For the actual pages in the journal, we're gonna start with just plain paper. Um, I want this to be easy again, and I want it to be individualistic or individualized. So if you want to use something different, you definitely can. I'm gonna go with plain paper, and I think I'm gonna try to keep everything close to the same size. And I do have a reason for doing that, but we're not gonna be extra, extra careful with this. We're gonna make it fun and easy and relaxed. So let me get some more pieces that are similar in size. I, I like this pink paper. Let's see, is that? That one will work. That one will work. I better put my little template here on the outside. And we are only going to use 10 pieces of paper. So tempted to use that. It doesn't really have a, I, I am gonna use that. Even though it's got the, the leaf on it, it is kind of a plain paper. I love that it's got the residue from the masking tape. This obviously was a library book and this was the front or the back inside page. I always save those pages when I'm tearing a book apart because Usually it's really good paper and it just makes the best journaling pages. It's a little bit short, but we're gonna go with it. So there's one, two, three, four pages that we have. And they're sitting in there really good. That's, this is, I need to take this out of the mix. This is some bond paper. While it is old and it is fun, it doesn't have the best surface for what we're gonna be doing. Um, it's got kind of a sticky surface. I guess it used to be used for typing. Some of these pages are a little short. I especially want them to be wide enough to all be the same size. Let's go ahead and cut these down. See, this is really easy. You could use a paper cutter if you want to. Okay, we have our 10 pieces 
This large piece of paper, of course, was on the supply list. This piece of paper is not huge. I did consider bringing out a huge piece of paper. Um, maybe I should, but we're gonna start with this one. It is so nice to work on top of a piece of paper when you're working in an art journal because you will end up with all of these colors and marks and you can then take that paper and incorporate it into your art journal. So we've got our 10 pages and I think what I wanna do is just put them in the order I wanna have them in and we're gonna kinda of spread the papers with any color or texture or that one pattern. We're gonna spread those out through the book so that we have variety between some of the pages. We don't want a bunch of pages all alike right together. Cut the edge off one more time so that this is fairly even. We're gonna make this a really simple binding. I have a little jar here where I keep my awls. This is the one I use the most and it's really, it's it tapers, so it'll make a pretty big hole if you put it all the way down to the, I guess that's called the shank or whatever. Um, what is that called? The hilt? The hilt, maybe. <laughs> anyway, um, and then if you twist it, so that increases the room that you would have if you wanted to use a larger cord and a larger needle to bind your journal. This is an awl too, I guess, but this is more like a tool that you would see in a workshop. Um, you could also just put a large needle through. Um, you would have to, you know, protect your finger. I keep uh, one of the drawers in my little supply cabinet over here full of large needles. When I say large, I'm talking about something. Look how wide that is. So let's go ahead and just poke two holes. We're gonna have this be really simple. And I am gonna put that in there and turn it. And then we're gonna put another one here and turn it. If you uh, would like to, you can put paper clips on the pages to really hold them into place. You don't have to, when you're doing just this few pages and the large holes like this and maybe a larger cord it's it's pretty easy to get everything back through and you might end up even pulling the all out again i also suggested in the supply list to pick a color palette you do not have to do that because you might end up finding images and things um, that are all different colors. But I am gonna choose a color palette. I'm gonna try to pick three main colors and just stick with that. And pink is one of those colors. I do love to work with pink. Um, let's see. Yeah, we're going in this way because we want to be able to tie this on the outside. And this is exactly what I was talking about, about pulling your awl out again, just to make sure that you can see that hole really easily. And then we're gonna just push this right through here. And it's as simple as that. I love making my own journals and especially art journals. Um, they just have so much personality so that was easy enough. A lot of times I put a little drop of glue, just the tiniest drop on the knot where you tied it, and then you can tie it again over that little bit of glue and it really helps to hold it. Um, depending on what kind of thread you use, it can slip loose over time. So this is the beginning of the art journal and I love it already, it's gonna be so much fun to work in and to complete this project. And I'm so excited to have you working with me on this. The next thing we're gonna do to this one, the colors that I chose for my color palette are gold and black and pink. So these are the colors I'm gonna be working with throughout the journal. I also noted on the list that you'll need white, whether it's white acrylic paint and a tiny brush for accents, or some sort of gel pen that's white. 
um, I think every everything benefits from um, just the light that white brings in. So what I'm gonna do, and this is one of the reasons that we're having this paper to work on, and it's one of the reasons I wanted these pages to be the same size. I just wanna go ahead and get some gold paint. Oh, I got my string in it, but that's okay. This is gonna be a junky art journal, so we're not worried. I'm gonna go ahead and get some gold paint all around the edges of any of the pages that we can manage to, to get into this paint. And if you want to, you can see I've got two big blobs of paint here. Let's just spread those out a little bit. That's one of the reasons I'm being kind of timid. I don't want a big blob of paint on one of the pages. And then I am gonna take what's left and just put it on the journal itself. We're definitely gonna be adding more and more to this. Um, this is gonna be a really layered journal, but I find that just, you know, being a little bit messy and spontaneous and finding a way to use up everything you have, it's gonna tie the journal together. Now the pages can end up sticking a little bit when you get paint on the edges like this. Uh, we don't really want them to stick together so much. Well, it's okay if a page tears, honestly, that's kind of the way I work. But um, you know, you might not want them to stick to the point where they're gonna just bond to the point that you can't even get them apart. So I would recommend standing the pages open and letting them dry or um, drying them a little bit. I keep a hair dryer close by. I also keep hand sanitizer and uh, different cloths out here to keep my hands cleaned up while I'm working. I did go ahead and dry mine a little bit. Stay tuned for the next video in this series. This is all I'm doing for today, but if you're excited to keep working in yours, just go to the next video. Thank you so much. Bye for now.